Hi, this is Jim from Trek World, and today we're going to take an exclusive look at 30 cartons of personal effects that belong to Greg Jean before they're even made available for auction. I want to welcome you to join us tonight. We're going to be going over a, a rather shocking discovery that happened, I guess, about the middle of last week when I got contacted by a gentleman out on the West Coast who has come into possession of approximately 30 crates. And I'm not talking like crates like you saw in Indiana Jones. These are crates like big boxes, you know, that, that you pack up when you get canned from a job. About 30 crates filled with things that obviously belonged to our buddy Greg Jean. Now, we had another host joining us tonight, and that is the gentleman who's in possession of these. We will actually begin. I'm going to go over. We're not going to review everything. There's 196 photographs to look at. We're not going to review all 196 because I want to release you guys in you know an hour or less unless the questions come in. I'm going to tell you what I know about these things. I'm going to tell you which one raise questions. All right. So the first thing I want to call out in this particular page, and this was the first page that was sent across to me that caught my attention when the gentleman reached out to me, is what you're looking at is a story outline dated December 12, 1968, for the lights of Zaytar by Sherry Lewis and Jeremy Tarcher. I'm sure that a wonderful piece of trivia, which a lot of Star Trek fans know, but if you didn't know, consider this an early Christmas present. The Sherry Lewis is the, the lady that is famous for Sherry and Lamb Chop, which was the children's show in the 1960s. But this is a story outline. That means this is the thing that was sent to Desi Lu before a script assignment was made. All right. So one of the viewers that we have regularly on this channel left a comment to maybe the live stream. I'm not sure. To one of the videos that we did recently where they told us that they were actually one of the ghostwriters that Desilu used in that position back there on the on time. And they and they actually said, without even knowing I was looking at this, because they said it, I even had no idea what was going to come into my mailbox. And they said, oh yeah, we always got story outlines. We never really got the scripts at that stage. We would read them. Sometimes we would make notes and you know and stuff and pass them on to people in Desi Lu. So that's what we've got right here. But what I really want to call your attention to is in the top right hand corner of that sheet of paper. It's very light. And again, you know, it may not be visible to you in the way that I'm sharing. It's signed by Gene Roddenberry in the top right hand corner. A lot of these documents that we're going to be zooming through in a moment or two are going to have people's names on them. Some we're going to recognize and some we're not. But I thought this one was pretty interesting because we know which ones actually were in the property of Gene. Now, I do want to point out that as most people are aware, Greg Gene was in fact aware of Star Trek at this time. He even did a color il illustration on the original Inside Star Trek newsletter that Gene Roddenberry would sell. He and Andy Probert did one separately. They didn't do one together. So he was aware of it. I'm not quite sure when he obtained this document. As we noticed from his estate auction sale, what, about a year and a half ago or so, he actually ended up in possession of a lot of things that are like kind of like head scratchers of exactly how he came into possession of them. He did not like not saving something. So that's why there's so much. And if you saw the original Greg Jean auction, you saw... You know, standard Desi publicity pictures and, you know, and stuff like that, that really were not what you and I would consider to be a scarce or hard to find. But Greg got them. Greg wanted them. And he saved them. And this is just another case of that. So these are the story outlines. This was really interesting. And I don't know if there's any more in here, but of course, this is a Polaroid, which was taken of Greg holding what appears to be, or what not doesn't appear, it definitely is Enterprise D. And this is the first thing we're going to be looking at that gives us an idea of the average of, let's say, the median year that this information came from Greg. We're going to see a, a small spread of years that I will cover with you, but I want to keep everybody in mind of one very important thing that happened only one time in Star Trek history, and that was when they were filming Star Trek V. Next Gen was still in production at the same time they were filming Star Trek V. This is the famous incident where Will went over and spoke to Bill Shatner, and, and Bill said something that hurt his feelings and you know, and, and Will, poor guy, carried a scar for like 15 years. But anyhow, for one time, they were both working at the same time, and they were on adjacent sound stages. 
One was over here, one was over there. I get may have my left and right to north and south reversed, but you get the general idea. So Greg actually has information that we're going to see in these boxes that are both from TNG and from Star Trek V and a little bit of four, but we'll get into that in a minute. So I think a lot of this documentation was stuff that was in his Star Trek V office that he used on lot. Because it's possible, and some of you that are familiar with folks out there, maybe people like, you know, obviously Paul knew it, stuff like that. Some of you may actually be aware if he actually did do both the movie and the TV series at the same time out of one office. But I would think that that's not a very practical way to do it, especially since they were not in the same sound stages so you did actually have to leave one to get to the other so my thought is he had an he had an area in star trek 5 and then of course when star trek 5 ended its filming you got to do something with everything that was left in the office so my original thought was that all of this stuff was created up at about that time and put into storage and that could very well be true and if that is the case that means that yes boys and girls there are potentially some of these things pop up in the future based off that idea but i guess we're gonna have to wait and see did i miss anything roger about what we talked about so far about the him in both apps or in both studios and stuff? I don't think so. I, I think you pretty much covered it, Jim. Okay. This is the only photo that I know of, folks, but if there are others, let you run them by you guys. All right, so next up. Now, this one really caught my attention, and the viewing audience can jump on this one for us, but what really caught my attention with this, this is obviously the high-level design for a tricorder. You know, so I'm not quite sure where it ended up using. When I first thought of it, oh, maybe that's what, what they were trying to design you know, as a pad or the tricorder for next gen, because it looks a little bit too futuristic and streamlined to have been in the TOS era. But then again, who am I to know? This could also be a an unused design, which we see quite often with Greg and Matt and even Doug, all the other effects artists and artistic talents that have worked on Star Trek over the years. But I would like to try to find out if somebody can help us on this one, exactly where this actually ended up. So yeah, maybe somebody out there knows. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot more time on this, but you know, it says paint as a standard tricorder. That's why I wasn't, you know, wasn't guessing at that. It actually says that at the top. I'm a little concerned about the tears in the age, but then again, a lot of the early stuff that we have, especially stuff from TOS, comes through damaged like this because the paperwork you know, this was something that was probably stuck in the bottom of a drawer or something. What's underneath of this right now is obviously a stack of papers underneath that in that box. Plus, as you can see, it looks like we got, you know, no money down. We've got some catalogs and stuff like that that were stuffed in there as well. But, you know, if this was the 1980s, I mean, you're looking at 35, 40 years old on, if, this, if that's the case. Yeah. So. And all of these storage units, by the way, and the gentleman that, that contacted me did not win an auction for a storage unit he actually negotiated the sale of these boxes from the gentleman who did there's a whole lot of these people as you are probably aware all around the country you know with things like stories wars the the tv show there's a whole lot of people that you know this is more than a hobby for them it's their business and they have been known to horse trade with each other all the time based off of you know one of them actually maybe knowing something a little bit more about what they're looking at than somebody else. So I'm going to go right by that, unless you, you can always stop it and go back if you want. But I think it's sort of a moot point at this point. That was somebody who had sent something from Sugarland, Texas to Greg. And so it was the shipping label that was on that box. That was the first letter that came across, the first photo that came across to me, in addition to the Polaroid, to let me know that, yes, this is, in fact, Greg Jean stuff. And we're going to see Greg's signature and imagery and everything all over as we go. Now, this is an interesting shot here of a bunch of stuff that was literally picked up and just shoved in the back of this this van or this truck from where they bought it. And I just want to point out that you have what appear to be two resin casts of Enterprises here. The one at the top part on, towards the right it appears to be probably the motion picture although to be perfectly honest i haven't really tried zooming in on it and seeing if there's any other possibility that it could be the phase two resin cast but viewing the time frame if this was around sometime around the range obviously of, of star trek 5 then obviously we're looking at 
you know, a resin cast of them doing something that they could test paint or whatever the refit model was in fact used in Star Trek V. And it was an extremely bad shape when it arrived. So this could be related to that and somehow. There's another part of another ship underneath of it, which is that like wedge thing that you see like the side intake valves, one on each side of its head, that we are completely mystified as to whatever that piece may be. So somebody might be able to give us a hint out of there. And all the way over on the far left-hand side of the screen, right? Here. We don't see the end of it really clear, but you're going to see some other photographs here in a few moments. It appears that some resin casts were made around this time of the TOS Constitution class. And while that mystified me at first, you're going to see some other pieces of paper, some designs and drawings from Gary Kerr and stuff in a few minutes that pretty much bear that out. And keep in mind that, you know, this is probably the earliest stages of them beginning to plan to make the physical models for Deep Space Nine's, what do you call it, Trials and Tribulations, the, the episode that took them back in time. They actually built practical models for the Enterprise, half size, six feet roughly, K7 and, and things of that nature. All right. Moving right along. So these are pictures that he just sent me that he had found of things that he thinks are related to this that sold at auction. This, however, is the first of the real mysteries I've got. And that is, hey, Len. Oh, and hi, Kathy. Sorry about that. I missed you guys. It is obviously Star Wars. Now, Greg didn't work on Star Wars, but he worked with people who did. And even more importantly, we discovered after he passed that one of the TIE fighters, one of the X-Wings that had been believed to be lost, sort of like the three-foot model for 40, 50 years, the story is it was in his garage, but I don't, it doesn't really matter to me where it was, but it was discovered in his possessions, and it was actually auctioned off in the auction that happened last year, and it walked away with $3.7 million, which is not bad to have something stowed away somewhere that you didn't even realize was worth, to have to be worth that much. So there is precedent for Greg having early production materials from Star Wars. My guess is it's from these collaborations. Remember, he did work in Close Encounters, and that might actually come up here in a few minutes on this. So I want to show you that one. But if anybody is aware of more information about how Greg may have worked with these resin casts, please let me know. We also do have a slide. I don't know if it's in this particular photo set that I've got here, but I was given a slide recently that actually shows them working on the physical practical effect model that this cast was made for and the ectochrome slide or Kodachrome slide no, Ectochrome, I think it was. It's dated 1975. So the, the slide definitely shows that the resin cast and this will all happen around the same time. But they may have also had the need to reproduce resin casts moving forward. I'm not sure. All right, so we're going to move on. This one I'm going to move pretty quickly through, but I'm going to show you a couple pages from each one. Thank you, Geek Filter. I would love to, well, it's, I'd love to stick a pin in, what's that? We stick a pin in that one and come back to it. Yeah, because I would like, any information and any other people who might like to talk to me. This is exactly what I was hoping for. So I've heard of these things, okay? And a lot of you have probably heard of these things, and some of you that are out in the Hollywood area may even worked with them. But when you're given a new movie or you're getting assigned to a new TV series, stuff, the, the, the prop master will quite often make a master prop book, just giving a listing of all the props, props that were created. But I've never laid eyes on one until now. And he was kind enough to send me close to 100 photos, and we'll we'll tab those through pretty quickly, because in all honesty, no one of them is going to tell you anything more than the one did before. But the very first part of that book is, is a list of prices and how many props were made. And this is absolutely fascinating, because this is the stuff that has been so hard for us to find back in the TOS era with Matt, because let's face it, you know, that was 20 years even before this, you know, it's just not doesn't stay around anymore. But you know, like the the captain's log. Now, this I believe is the is the device that yeah, because the shipboard prop. So I think this is like the terminal that, that Jean-Luc would use his captain's logers, his voice entries into. And I'm pretty sure we did see one, I think, in Star Trek V as well. But my old brain could be spinning on its own right now. Anti-grav boots. Reebok says they are making W L E F X. 
No idea. But we now know that they were actually produced by Reebok, which I never knew before. And it looks like it says, well, it doesn't really have a price on it. There's seven hundred dollars under or six hundred on the next one down. But that's Object D, which is anti grav belt. Ohura's earpiece, two of them at twenty five dollars each. But it says stock needs repair. And he penciled in a hundred and fifty. So I guess there's a little bit of uh, inflation with that. But anyhow, engineering. So notice how it's notice how it's laid out. Federation shipboard props, engineering tools, assault team props. I think that this may possibly be, this particular list may actually be referencing Star Trek VI more than Star Trek V, because of course we saw the anti-grab boots used in the attack uh, that killed the Klingon Chancellor. And of course, the same thing. The the assault team was also in six. I actually liked five. I'm a minority, I think, for a lot of Star Trek fans, Roger, on that. And because I loved the, the the person, the person stuff. I mean, granted, there's a lot of stick in it, but, you know, the fact that, you know, McCoy and Kirk and Spock, you know, are at a campfire in, I guess it's Yosemite, yeah. regardless of the Superman flying stunts and stuff like that, that, that whole thing just played off to me as three very, very close friends in the twilight of of their years who simply continue to enjoy each enjoy each other's company and so that made perfect sense to me and the the pain that each one of them suffers mccoy's pain spock's pain and shares with cybok i thought was also very well written it may be that the shortcomings that most of us criticize Star Trek, Star Trek Five may actually have been right. difficulties budget wise and story wise because you know Shatner you know, his budget was re, was you know it was non existent and then somebody you know stole all the uniforms and he had to get new ones right. and then the stupid studio caught on fire and he's running around the studio you know with with water trying to put the fire out right. he shoots you know he, he shoots in the end of the, you can't have your big rock man but we'll give you one rock man it's like okay. Make a rock man, put it on set. Well, we don't have the money really to actually do anything with a rock man. So you're just going to have to make do with a fuzzy face in a cloud. All right. So I think some of the things that we blame him for, it really wasn't his fault. All right. Moving along. Although I do want to point out something here. Phaser pistols. Look at that. Close up times two, 400. It says, it looks like TNT lights. So it's $800. Hero six at 200 with lights. Dummy 15 at 150 magnets it looks like but what's interesting is this is the first time i've ever seen reference to a close-up pistol phaser and a hero phaser and that might just be because i've had my head buried in tos for so long here on this channel that there were no close-up heroes there it was just a hero and so maybe that's what caught my attention with this. Okay, serial numbers on the phaser pistols in the magazine. So this is kind of interesting. This appears to be some kind of punch-out template for yet another tricorder of some type. This is the first of many photos, and I'm going to talk about this one, and then we're going to skip through a whole bunch of others simply because they're all different props. But basically, this is the belt that Scotty used in Star Trek V. And you'll see how many there were. There was originally one, then they scratched through and made two, which means obviously another one had to be made up during production i have no idea what under status what s what it looks like stp 31 is but to me although this was the 80s but to me growing up stp was that fuel additive that we used to put in our cars comments gone 10 i don't know what's that 10 19 maybe 88 i'm not quite sure what is referenced by gone but you're going to see that on every one of the photos so maybe that's when they finished using them and put them in storage i'm not quite sure but there's Scotty's flashlight, including some functional information there. You can actually see how thick that book is so far. Just take a look where his thumb is and the, uh, and the little tabs above it. An augering device. I think we saw the, the the guy from the Hills Have Eyes or whatever was was drilling into it at the beginning. This is Akbar. Has nothing to do with Star Trek. He's in Star Wars. And this is another kind of, of item that we found in this thing that indicates that he has either himself or other people involved in Star Wars. And this is uh, along with uh, what's inside that folder, along with the sketch on the top. Notice that they almost look like, and the Lord knows I don't want to oversimplify this. This is raw talent, ladies and gentlemen, in, in a form of creative mind that I don't think the rest of us can actually understand inside. You know, because look at the way they're all cut out. They're almost like color forms. And he wouldn't have done that unless there was a specific need that he was trying to illustrate or do something. And it's just, unfortunately, maybe he did use them like color forms over storyboards. I don't know. But it's just absolutely amazing. So this one, this is another one. This is a shot description reference so you know the very first one extent ex exterior desert area night a still dark night somewhere deep in the desert the sky is filled with stars gradually we see one of the stars is moving coming toward the earth 
growing larger and brighter. Saucer model, shoot desert plate. Shot status, shoot back lot, no desert and no plate needed. And that was scene 26, Heartland shot 2101, Flight of the War Witch, May 8th, it aired. This is actually Buck Rogers and the 25th Century. Yep. Mood board material, maybe. We do that in advertising graphic design. Could very well be. I mean, that's, that's exactly the kind of little gems I'm hoping to find it and take back to our benefactor here. So this, I also assumed, was from Buck Rogers and the 20, 25th Century. And I assume it because the name at the top says Ranger 1. Well, the the uh, Buck ship in, in in that was actually Ranger Three. It was not Ranger One, right. and the drawing looks a little bit more like something you would see in Battlestar Galactica than in Buck Rogers. But who's to say? It might have been a a design that just never get made. But do note the very specific details. I mean, two halogens, six volt, six point five amps access from rear with tool six mounts aluminum and steel architecture all hatches except front have pinhole to remove magnetic closures note the, this is definitely a shooting hero that he designed but i don't recognize it and so maybe some of our friends out there that are either have better memories than i have which happens you a bunch of you the same age i am you know exactly what i'm talking about or just have been working in that environment long enough to go oh i think i remember this but this seems pretty far along in design to not have actually been used the star trek bible everybody knows all about it so i'm moving right on by this one is a little bit intriguing this appears to be a ferengi now if so then this is obviously something that ended up in this box of goodies from his time on star trek the next generation and or deep space nine the only difference that i see here is in the the sculpt of this armor that armor is the least ferengi like armor i've ever seen matter of fact we've seen some things almost like some type of tube feeding into the arm into that thick armband that's clamped over the forearm this might actually have been an early scale mock-up for what they thought they might do with the Ferengi in that very first episode in The Next Generation, when it had been their intention originally to for them to be the new big bad. But unfortunately, to say it was a failure would be an understatement. It was just, it was comical. So I don't know if that's the case, if it was like that. You know, Geek Filter, you've had the exact same thought I did. The first thing I looked at when I saw this was Borg. It just doesn't seem to have the level of augmenting that I would have expected. They're not that Borg didn't seem to be very much good at or very keen on the body plate armor, like the shoulder pads and stuff like that. But I don't know. So maybe somebody will be able to give us a heads up on this because this is one of those things that could be of historical significance if we actually could find a way to say, yeah, that was one of the early designs for what the board was, or what the Ferengi were supposed to look like when they were introduced as bad guys, but we just didn't go that way. Enterprise D and the refit. Nothing really to see here, so we'll keep moving on. Some photographs, again, mixed box. I see some coat of color chrome slide film back there. That looks like the Playmates Enterprise. Remember the little, I think it was Playmates, that made the little three, four inch metal die cast Enterprise? And these other photos, I'm sure most of you guys will probably, that looks like it's a Jupiter 2 maybe in the back of one. I'm not. Yeah, a couple well, of those Jupiter 2, yeah. So yeah, these are obviously some stuff. And then you can see the magazines under here. Who's who of something other Doctor Who, and I guess that's time. Doctor Who Fan Club of America. I mean, when I say that Greg was as much of a Star Trek fan and geek as we ever were, this is a perfect example of it because, I mean, here we are later, you know, 70 years or 60 years later, looking at, you know, he saved the, the fan club information he got for things like Doctor Who and stuff like that from back then. Shuttle. For Star Trek The Next Generation, the RCS systems need not light. It is colored. If you have any videos, photos, or documents that you would like to donate to us, please feel free to send them to Jim at trek-world.com or submit them via the web at submit.trek-world.com. Colored, okay? I have no idea. I don't know if that's supposed to be DuckTales or Howard the Duck. I don't think it's Howard the Duck. He probably would have had a cigar. But yeah. Wearing, an, wearing a Starfleet uniform. Okay. There are boxes of this, and this stuff just absolutely boggles my mind, folks. I mean, obviously, this in here is a piece of the Enterprise plaque, and I think I have a photograph he sent me, just in case I didn't realize that. So, you know, but there's other pieces in here. There's part of a, you know, the original Romulan. These almost look, I just don't see them being used on screen. They might have been for reference, 
But again, I've never seen anything quite like this before. And there is a wild, what's the one looking for? There is a wild mixture of different shows represented in a couple of these slides. We can clearly see Next Gen. There's a another Next Gen, the, the, the Bird of Prey. There's a Toss Phaser in there too, Jim, but right by the center. Oh yeah, right there. Now that could have been yet another cast, because notice the Phaser 1's not in it, for all of, I don't know, that could have been for stuff that he did in crap. Trials and tribulations. Oh, just sold it all on eBay. Okay. I was on an eBay auction. All right. Let's keep moving. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please do not repeat the name of this hat in public, but <laughs> we could not help ourselves. Only Greg Jean. Yeah. And I think we can just leave it on that. And yeah, uh, Greg, if you're out there in the interstellar cosmos or just heaven looking down on us, we'd like you to know that you put a smile on a lot of old Gen 1 people's faces with this one as time went on. You know, you know, Jim, I'm starting to wonder, just out of curiosity, if this is a hat that Shatner had made up after he filmed Star Trek V, with all the, the issues that he dealt with during the production of that, I wonder if this is about his his sentiment you know and the timing the timing is about right so yeah. Yeah, actually roger that is a really good question and that is something that somebody might actually be able to say in comments and stuff if you're aware of more than one of these out there because i would bet you they're probably where you're right roger i don't really see him doing a one-off as a gag or something it would be really interesting to see where they might come yeah because that looks like it's embroidered it looks like it's stitched or embroidered it doesn't look like it's Geek right. Filter says that's a new Star Trek Las Vegas hat. Yeah. Okay, some close-ups of what we just looked at a few minutes ago. These are more things I told you guys we'd be moving through this a, a little bit, you know, here. But, you know, these are things that got the descriptions of but don't necessarily have photos. But this is all part of that pop book thingy. Cast and crew rap gifts for, you know, you're probably right, Neurotic. I'm almost it's right, Neurotic, as opposed to wrong, Neurotic. You're probably right. Those do actually, now that I think about it, they really do fit in with some of the gag gifts that were usually handed out during the wraps right. forks so we're still star trek here star trek five let's keep going I yes i just got to throw out too that's just kind of zipping through these but people folks can go back and watch the video and pause it if they really want to get a good look at some of the stuff too you know if we're going to help track down or identify this is probably going to be a homework type of assignment now i do want to point out it's something right here ladies and gentlemen the disposition of these items is not decided universally they say you know it would be really easy to say hey they're going to box them all up and they're going to take them to heritage or they're going to take them to prop works or prop store or or end on or, or, or all of them end up on ebay like somebody made a comment there that one of those lots apparently had made its way to ebay right. there's no set distribution for any of them which means we don't know at this point in time where they're all going to show up so if I ever do find out where like the majority of them are going to end up after we get the stuff done, I'll be more than happy to pass that information along to you guys. But at this particular point, we make the assumption that they are still in hand and that depending on what information we find out, some of them may just get jettisoned on eBay and some of them might actually be held back, you know, because it's like, oh crap, you didn't really know what you had there. That photograph is blah, blah, blah. You know, things like, I doubt this. We could get a comment back tomorrow from Doug Dr Drexler or from Mike Aguda that says, oh man, yeah, that was what we looked at. We just never did anything with them or something, which now suddenly elevates the cost. What I discovered in the Greg Jean auction. A lot of value to some of these props and things too. So Moving right along. Klingon earpiece. Isn't that nasty looking? Yeah. Klingon tricorder. I do have to admit these are actually some of the nicer photographs. And keep in mind, these pictures are of the prop when it was pristine. It will all be on eBay. It's going to start listing within the next few days. Okay, cool. Yep. Klingon pistol. Breathing mask for settlers. Notice how they just don't appear to work very well. Talbot cigarette case. All right. Nomad cups. Auger device. I like this. They actually took two photographs of this little guy. A pipe bazooka and shells number two. And pipe bazooka number one. No reference of shells. Interesting. No dude. Okay. Absolutely. Yes, sir. We will not do that. Pipe rifle pipe pistol so this is obviously what the settlers were using on on the planet in star trek 4 where where the ambassadors were and stuff like star trek 5 with the ambassadors tricorder two hero tricorders with operating instructions yes isn't that crazy star trek actually pro progressed to the point that you had to actually give an operating instruction manual to the cast so they would know how to use it realistically communicator another good shot of the interior i have seen this kind of communicator in, in auctions around the country from time to time federation binoculars mccoy's medical kit 
McCoy Medical Instruments Federation Shields. One unroll, unrolled, 12 rolled, one flat. No, it looks like magazines, maybe. Yeah. Phaser pistol. I never liked the phaser designs that were used in any of the movies. They just, you know, they they all just didn't look, they didn't have the same, in my opinion, the same design language right. that Matt's original designs did. I agree, Jim. Okay. And I'm being told that the seller on eBay is Dusty Shed. Scotty's flashlight, again. Okay. Engineering goggles. We're going to step through this. Like I said, guys, this is a lot of stuff. That one came straight from Harbor Freight, apparently, and made its way onto Star Trek. Engineering hand tool number five. Okay. I saw Mambo five. All right. Let's keep going. Electronic. That was Scotty's. That one picture was Scotty's tool for the antimatter flow, and that was survives when he was trying to disrupt the flow. Okay. And I think, wasn't this, wasn't, I mean, there was something like that looked like almost yeah. like this in Toss, wasn't there? This was, this looks like, it's either, the, it is, or it's very similar to the one that they used in, for instance, in several episodes, but one, for instance, is the Doomsday Machine. When Kirk asked Scotty to get the Constellations engines going, and he goes and grabs, goes and reaches in something and grabs out one of these and turns it on and he starts using it to charge recharge the impulse engines i believe okay. it may not yeah it may not geek filters right i'm not sure if it's exact same but it's, it's the, the design yes yeah yeah i'm sure the interior of the buttons and everything are different but i just had a deja vu feeling when i saw it so yep yep very now, uh, scotty's hand tool okay. i'm gonna keep going because we'll be here all night if we look at all of them exactly that, all right, so there's the captain's log that they were talking about. Yep. Comments to be determined. I like that. McCoy's terminate. I don't even know if I want to know. Yeah. I wonder if that's the device that he picks up to turn off the father's bio bed. I, I, think, it is. I think it is, actually. Yeah. Yep. Camping gear, old backpack, bedroll, bourbon bottle, coffee pot, pot for beans, ladled, come and get it triangle. Hot plate stove, maybe not. Don should look into these props. Can probably be used in stock material from Bonanza. Mr. Shatner feels all of McCoy's stuff should be old. Sections 1 through 7 total, 46,000 plus 8.5% to meet the September delivery date. I need a third deposit immediately. Wow. So everything is to be... Right, never mind. Let's keep going. Miscellaneous parasite props parasite i think that might be what they were referring to it with the where the settlers were i just never heard that word yeah i think you're right Hang on props pipe weapons assembly assault team props reg gene serial numbers we saw this okay so this is interesting take a look at this ladies and gentlemen from to Steven Spielberg from Greg Jean, trying to explain to him why he jacked up the price of the mothership in Close <laughs> Encounters. This is unique. Yeah, I like this. This is a unique piece yeah, of this. I love it. Paul just says he remembers meeting Greg when he was working on a lander ship he had made for the TV show V at a, at the shop named Seward. I assume that Seward is Seward. I'm not Seward. quite sure. But yeah, I absolutely love this. And I even like how he talks about I could purchase a lot of electrical supplies needed very cheaply from Star Trek. Oh, okay. We'll see how that goes. This may, however, require the company to be a signatory to all the unions like Apogee, but this may not be legal. If we do it through my company and eliminate a lot of the uniform studio union costs, we estimate the bare bones essential cost in the area of $300,000. And then he goes on to, to talk about, you know, a little bit more support on that. It's interesting that this conversation is the same seed conversation that Justman had with Hang. In, right. in the first year or two of Star Trek. You know, how do we get this stuff without having to go through all the unions? Hmm. Thank you, Greg. Next. This is the original quote, 200,000, and, and when it was, you know, and what notes they have. And there is a letter. I don't remember where it is right now, but there is a letter response back. I think it's the other way around. I think the original letter was from Spielberg, and that was his answer. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. This is TV production tape for the pilot of Deep Space Nine. One particular scene, though, the emissary battle sequence with wreckage. So we're probably talking about the reproduction of War 359. Fittings. How fitting a label. That ship looks like maybe Buck Rogers. I don't know. There's all sorts of stuff in there. You guys probably have. All right. Some of these things I'm zooming through, like that thing right there. I didn't, it was not on the screen long enough for you to find out and read it. Even if you pause it, it's probably not going to do you any good. But that was a paycheck stuff. So this is pretty awesome. This is is the constitution class another let me rephrase that another constitution class resin piece it looks like and knowing that they were shooting for a six foot model to the, be the finished size 
in Deep Space Nine, I think that's probably where these t where the TOS stuff is coming from. The phaser resins and the stuff that we saw, I'm pretty sure, yep. from that right now. My eyes have given out. I was told, I think, exactly the name that was on there, but I can no longer remember it. Somebody recognizes that scrawl. We might be onto something, but anyhow, that's Greg Jane's triple A card. Don't leave home without it, ladies and gentlemen. So... Keep in mind here that the, the cast of the refit right below here in the bottom right-hand corner, the refit was eight feet long, if I remember correctly, and the Enterprise re remake or the remake of the Enterprise was six feet long. So again, it looks like we're in the right studio scale for that. Wow. Greg's wow. Tosh ship for sale at Star Trek The Experience gift shop with a $25,000 sales tag on it. Yep, wow. Yeah, and, and, and Paul, the crazy part is I think it would probably go for maybe easy three times that now. Yes. Simply exactly. because of the voracious appetite of these collectors that right. just, you know, it's like we're all, you know, well, those of us who own houses are benefiting by, you know, the, the voracious ac appetite of people wanting to buy new houses, you know, and it's driving our property values up. But man, all right, that is, looks like that is the top of the refit because yep. that port looks suspiciously like where the, the, the Vulcan warp shuttle, or the shuttle itself, the warp sled detached. Yeah. More photos to keep Star Trek fans happy. Some more stuff here, so this is pretty interesting. This little guy here is obviously the same, like, turbo scoop shit thing we saw earlier on. This is obviously, these look like these are positives created from molds of the Excelsior. These are obviously, well, may, may not be obvious to everybody, and I'm sorry if I make that, if I make it sound facetious. These are actually the bottom of NCC 1701D from Star Trek The Next Generation. Not quite sure what these edge, these trimming pieces are. And of course, you're going to see a whole bunch of stuff back here. You know, Lord only knows what's in all of these boxes. These are some of the casts that we've seen, you know, the resin casts were made from. A starboard warp nacelle. So these are the first of, you'll see another photograph in here, but these are the, the Gary Kerr blueprints, which we do know for a fact that, you know, Greg and company, they did use those for building the model and making sure that everything was completely accurate. Intercooler true views, you know, there it is right there. Starship USS Enterprise 1701, warp nacelles and pylon scale one to 189, drawn by Gary G. Kerr. Hope to meet him someday, he's real friendly and he sent me a lot of these like AutoCAD drawings and, and, and vector drawings of all of the stuff that they used for restoring the Smithsonian in 20, 20 was it, 2014, 2015. And we're gonna move on past that now. Boxes, boxes everywhere. And all the boards did shrink. Isn't that from the Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner? Anyhow, lots of interesting stuff. I think, personally, the rarest thing I see here, which will probably go for at least half a million dollars, is that unique tape dispenser, which apparently has displaced itself in time by about, I don't know, 40 years to get into these boxes? What do you think? More videotapes. Somebody had a plushie. I guess that's the equivalent of the, the hand squeegee things they use now for when you're trying, when you want to kill somebody at the office, but you don't can't risk it. Teching. That's all I'm going to say. As teching. Yep. Absolutely fascinating. Okay, so this is obviously the SETI Alpha Eel, okay? However, do you need to point out, this is the SETI Alpha, Alpha Ear on steroids. This thing is so much bigger than what the screen use prop would be. That this implies to me this is a resin cast for something, or that, let me rephrase this. This is the output of a, res a resin cast for something, because if you look at the skin texture and the coloring and everything, this thing is either in its very last stages of what he wanted to look like, or like one step away from it, depending if it was used for some kind of display or something to stick in the background somewhere. The, the folks in, in Trek over the entire you know, 67, 60 year history are, are notorious for reusing things in the background of episodes and movies. And some of them you can see and others you just simply been told about because they weren't with a camera resolution. So yeah. I'm not quite sure what this is. I did think possibly Star Trek experience but the timing's not right. I think the last thing, and you'll see it here in a few minutes, I think the latest thing in this box is from like 1991. Jim, if those are latex, I wonder, and Paul, I was thinking the same thing Paul was, I think those are used for close-up. Before Kirk, when it comes out of it, Chekhov's ear, they probably, for the detail, they would have had to have a close-up. And I'll bet those are latex and I'll, so that they'll move. I'll bet they're for close-up. You know, what? I think you're right. I think, I think in all honesty, excuse me, Glenn just probably nailed it yep. because... Yeah, I know. I thought at first about maybe they made this thing big to come out of the ear, but then I remembered they actually made a big giant ear of, yes. of Walters that was not very realistic looking whatsoever. 
and came through it. However, they did do a close up of this thing on the floor when he shot it, and and, and they are latex. I'm told. So yes, that is almost certainly what it was, especially with latex. Yep. So mystery solved. They may not be screen used. It's going to be difficult to know that at this particular point right. uh, because they're latex and because they are such, they are relatively inexpensive to reproduce. I agree with you. It would like cover my whole desk. Yep. Yeah. I, I would put up with that. I think I could live with that. All right. Keep moving. That is Cardassian design. It has something to do with DS9. Okay. So this is interesting. This is really, really interesting because not a lot of people know this, and it's very rare for me to see anything. As a matter of fact, this is the first time I have ever seen this in print, although I knew about this and one other movie. But I'm going to put Roger on the spot because I don't know if I've told him or not, but Roger, what's wrong with this picture? 86. Six. Let's see. Five. The adventure continues. Well, the adventure continues. Well, I don't know. Was that used for? Yeah, you, you hit it right there. Okay. Was the that original working title for Star Trek Four was, in fact, the adventure continues before the voyage home. Yes. And that was the original title. It was used for a while inside production. It was a direct reference to the fact that those were the last words you saw at the end of Star Trek III. Yep. And then it was used for the, you know, the voyage home. Now, it's very similar to them actually naming, you know, the, the second movie, The Vengeance of Khan. And right. then renaming it to the wrath of Khan. You know, a, a movie poster. I don't even know if it's a movie poster, but a poster showed up with Vengeance of Khan on it. I have a photograph of that. And Corgi in the Brit in Britain did not get the word in time. So <laughs> their little metal starships of the Enterprise and the Klingons they sold actually did also on the box, on the bubble wrap or the bubble pack, you know, the, the started thing actually said the vengeance of Khan. They did not have that problem here in the U.S. Bear with me one moment, folks. Okay, there. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Perfect. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to shut up for, I, I'm going to I need to take a second to introduce, this is a, this is a friend of mine that reached out to me. This is the gentleman who sent me these yeah. photos, and he may actually have some questions or things he wants me to point out, or, or things that we might need your help on. And if nothing else, this is the world's greatest show and tell. So, I think it'll be more of the show and tell side. You know, I have a a lot of stuff but it's really not sorted in a way i can show you I so it'll be just kind of like a mystery adventure i guess you would call it excellent i'll try to all right you go. oh yeah so that's obviously greg at the far end yeah buck Bokai. for those of you who are into deep space nine he was the guy on the back of the baseball card that was avery it was cisco's idol this is, is a, some sort of fan letter right. we could just move on you know there's all kinds of there he yeah. is again creating something i got a bunch of these letterheads anybody wants us some letterhead but I did see so we have a star trek next generation notes on hole markings for the uss enterprise miniature so we can kind of show you that yeah Okay, cool. Look at that. You know, I think these documents are just going to go on. Yeah. It's going to be the same. The colors. I mean, if there's anything specific you'd like to see, if you want me to get into the the blueprint box or the different okay so uh, and roger was right the those the bugs they are uh, latex i was okay. watching there for a minute sure I, it kind of looked like they were but i wasn't sure so i don't have any questions yet i do want to call out for the viewers here especially if this stuff does make it away to this dusty shed on on ebay there are a, there's at least one one thing that says gene miscellaneous, miscellaneous production paperwork not used for tng Voy voyager trek five and six so if it makes its way up to ebay you guys might want to keep an eye on that because those could be interesting because they weren't used they were aborted designs or maybe they were used later but that just happened to be how they were cataloged what is that little fellow? So this is a first draft, second draft. Looks like it has some kind of written note on top. Got the teaser. Yeah. I have a an actually I, for next generation. I have an endless supply of uh, call sheets. As many call sheets as one person could possibly need. Wow, that's insane. Okay, let's see what this folder is. Amazing. All this stuff's pretty kind of. There's like a a little bit of a. Paul did bring out that one of the things that we that you're seeing him out of there, you could actually see Andy Probert's handwriting on one of them. That was pretty slick. Yeah, no. Shouldn't shouldn't. I think this is a final frontier. So there's more. Here we go. We have some sort of a office memo. Gotta love a good inner office memo. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Directions to China Lake with a map. I guess this is probably where they would have done some filming. Yep. There you go. We got a. Nice little personal note to Greg. This is everything so far. Cool. Final Frontier. 
I think this is like part of the next generation, but we can move on to a, I have all these boxes full of random stuff. This one's, let's see, blueprints. Maybe find some, I think you've already showed some of this, but we can kind of flip through and you can see what's in. There's definitely going to be things that don't belong in between what I would call a random stuff. The more decal sheets, wow. the shadow. Dodal. When I looked through the stuff that you had sent me originally, I didn't find anything that appeared to Eight past 91 for me. I don't think so. You know, I'd probably give you an idea of maybe when this stuff was all exactly. put into storage. Yeah. Well, that Greg Jean work on the shadow? I think he, he worked yeah. on a lot of things. You know, I did see that there was some stuff that he worked on that he was really never even credited for. He got a good Close yes. Encounters movie yeah, poster. I think my fa one of my favorite movie posters of all time. Oh. I just loved the, the symmetry and the, you know, and the how the way the lines worked and everything. It was incredible. Talk about simple battles. Random. I don't know if this is a, more of a Star Trek box. I can move on to another one. All right. We've kind of mixed up these boxes a little bit, you know, and then, then their original form. Yep. Oh, okay, this one's got a lot of blueprints in the box. One blueprint we did find that was pretty interesting was for uh, Dr. Doolittle for the snail. And it's got the original order form from the 60s. Oh, wow. It's kind of neat. I can show it to you if you want to see. That's a small scale, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking it might actually be the uh, the die cast. The, uh, he was. I did see some letters from Gal yeah. which would probably be in the, uh, you know, once again, we get to that collector side. Yeah, exactly. Because he not only created stuff, but he, he, he was, you know, he was a pack rat. He collected all of this stuff. Right. Yeah. Even, See, like, even this is like a catalog order item. It's not even something he would have made. You know, like I said, I don't have any of this stuff. Here we go. We get into some blueprints here. I'm going to set down this phone so I can unfold one of these for you. Tonight, yes. for those of you who've been following along at home over the past few weeks or whatever, he is one of the gentlemen that's worked in Hollywood. He actually was one of the so, co-author of the animated Star Trek book that was published a couple years back. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, this just looks like a for a whole design. Oh, yeah. You got your, uh, something, and I wish I could tell you where it was. But when I was showing some of the pictures to my folks at the over this weekend, we did see something that looked like it may have actually been from Batteries Not Included. Yeah, there was some stuff from Batteries Not Included. Oh, correct. Correct. You did actually see because it was one of those things we were all looking, man, this looks so familiar to us. And then I think it was Michael Hodges that said, I think that might be Batteries Not Included. Yeah. Okay. Movie one. Ridley wants to see a copy of the exterior hole markings at your convenience. Holy cow. This is uh, for budget purposes only. Not for construction. Huh. I'll get a quote off of. Interesting. We have more. What they're doing was generations. So maybe this might have been what they were working on before they were actually able to get Shatner to agree to participate in the first movie. And that changed the whole story outline when they did that. Look, yeah. Looks like you got some battle damage on that one. Yeah. Well, this one's got some stamps on it. Star Trek copyright 1990, Paramount Pictures, unauthorized. So yeah, so this is even still within 90 to 91. I still, my, my gut instinct till, still tells me that this was stuff was boxed up and put away. He was still working in next gen when he put it away. Right. So my guess is maybe Star Trek Six because we have seen some reference to Star Trek Six in the stuff you've shown us. Right. So I think it was like when he finished working on that on the last TOS movie, that was when he put these things away. Some of them would obviously continue to exist in his other locations because we saw stuff there that's used by Deep Space Nine for the trials and tribulations. Right. What was uh, what was difficult about the first season, Shuttlecraft? That's your got a new proposal. Maybe the entrance was hard. They, uh, you know, it's they they always had the same problem happened in the original series. The Shuttlecraft was impossible to do on a budget, so they actually ended up using, ironically, the design they were used was based on something Matt Jeffries did that he called a utility truck. So I wouldn't be surprised if something happened exactly the same way. You know, the initial designs by Probert and, and the rest of them. Probably we're going to cost too much money. Right. Because that's Rick again. Yeah. Suddenly human. Cleon hand weapon. Yeah. Wow. This one's got a hearing core almost. Let's see. You got the staff and crew list. We'll skip that. You seem to don't want to post a public phone number. Yeah, I'd rather not the entire Hollywood community. In yeah. Single seat. Yeah. It would be fun. I could go find it. I don't like and claim that he did it. Here's a, here's yeah. from Robert Abel to all Star Trek personnel. Shit. I would like a I like a copy of that in a photograph if you have a chance because I'm, I'm yeah, trying. I'm trying. If you see something like that, just let me know and I'll put it aside. Thank you. I appreciate it. 
So, because uh, I'm trying to do a video to tell that whole Robert Abel story, everybody knows it, but I don't think anyone's ever documented exactly what happened and what went wrong when. Right. It was just a colossal waste of money. Well, 78 seems right about in that time frame, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Well, it looks like we have uh, Steve's script, Star Trek Two. Yeah, that that name actually showed up on a couple of things that you had sent me across. Keep or my years, or whatever. Random uh, newspapers in between. I guess a good old. Uh, well, that's probably why you saved that. We got the ad on it. Next oh. generation. Yep. This is November first, nineteen ninety. So it really it gives you a really a age into the uh, this into this box. Yes. Something for some uh, graphics. That article was probably about the decision to make the first next gen movie because yes. the show actually went been in production for a couple of years, and that makes sense because the other thing he showed us a moment ago was from from a copyright nineteen ninety. So yeah, that was probably when they made the announcement. She's beautiful. You got the whole development. Yeah. Wings are too thick. All the changes they made to these things. Oh, nice. nice. You even got the window configuration. What would you ever do without that? Right. Some more, which is they had more handwritten letters. Nice. Yeah, that yeah, it's crazy. It Technical knowledge has been lost. Well, that's interesting. Oh, we got some Lucas film letters. Was and this is entirely how I, I think. Wh however, the, he's in the Lucasfilm loop or whatever. I think that's the same thing that put him in possession of the the X wing, the resin molds and stuff that we've seen here. Yep. Yeah, I don't think there was any no. There was no rhyme, no reason to how these boxes were put together. You know, you'll hit Star Trek stuff and then you hit random stuff. So I am curious. There's a what looks like a, a lobby poster or something right above this box, a little bit to the right. It says we're no of this. Uh, it's a VHS store display. Right. No video cassette. Okay, so... Hi, right. I was watching your untold story of the Klingon D7. I found it nice, light, and fun. I prefer your type of broadcast versus those that disparage the series, talking about how bad the special effects were and so forth. I don't like those type of videos. I like the ones that celebrate the idea behind Star Trek, the original series, one of the most successful sci-fi franchises in history. And I like the, the celebration of optimism that the series puts forward. And uh, I found your broadcast informative and nice. My name is Richard Bennett. Thanks. Bye-bye. Okay, so this is, this isn't the Columbia House release. I think they released in stores two, two episode packs. You don't see them very often because they did sell them, but, but most people who collected Star Trek on video, because that usually ended up collecting them from the Columbia House two packs. So I have not seen that pop up display to floor before. That's kind of neat. I'll bet there's a date on that, on the back of that, or at the bottom, or on the bottom of the thing itself. Uh -huh. I'll bet there's a date. Yeah, not seeing it. typically. Yeah. typically I'm not typically. saying it's worth anything other than beyond. It's just it's interesting. I've never actually because a lot of the the mom and pop video shops at that time, you know, Blockbuster had yet to destroy them. It was very unusual for them to actually use the the stand ups. Right. Okay, so that's Encounter at Far Point. Yep. The jellyfish. Jellyfish. Yeah. Wow. Some story storyboards. I'm assuming. Yep. Pete Filter said just before he left, "This reminds me of when we went through Bob Klein's garage and streamed it to my writing partner on the East Coast." Everyone loves a good uh, dig. Oh yeah. Just said. John's right here. I mean, there's just a plethora of just all kinds of stuff in, mixed in with this. I mean, he's got his uh, Futaba controller. Yep, that's amazing. So, you know, that makes sense. He probably used those. He, he probably used armatures and engines and stuff from RC vehicles to power some of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I never thought about that until just now, but yeah. Here's a TIE Fighter. Yeah, look at that. Those are pretty cool. Notice Sorry, I lost it. And notice how they're turning red. They, they, that same ectochrome <laughs> film, the emulsion, <laughs> codachrome, not ectochrome. Sorry. Codachrome is the what it. it what faded with Mark Star Trek the tele television series new ep new television episodes? I wonder if that's for the releases. That part of the fan club because that looks that look yeah that, that looks either really really it's got a backside yeah. Oh, this is other stuff. Yeah, it must be a fan club or a VHS order form, maybe a video club. That, that that's be. it. That's that's why it said new episodes. I yeah. was trying to figure out how we could have something that was later. But yep. still talking about while it was in that's you're right. That's what it was for. Yep. This is a resume. Looks like they uh, Nilo Jamaro. They did a concept design for Star Trek Three. They worked on Return of the Jedi, Poltergeist. And this Poltergeist. person had a pretty good resume. Wow. Yeah. You're hired. Let me see. Apogee group on on Facebook probably knows all of these names by heart. That might even be in the Apogee group. Yeah. They, they let me in a while back because I guess they thought that I was somebody talented. Just use it for research. This is they're making something for Star Trek. This is for the six inch and the twenty four inch TV model. 
effective immediately. The following project has been opened. 1987. Like. So the 24 inch model was def. It was the very first. The two foot model was the very first studio model made of the Enterprise D. The six inch I had not heard of, but that would not surprise me. I mean, you know, I actually, which I think were seven. Weapon designs. That's me. When all this stuff did come out, too, I did miss some form of a weapon. It was inside of a gun case. It was a prop weapon, but it was pretty cool looking, but nobody seemed to know what it was for. I do not have a photo, though. Okay, cool. We did get some information. Thank you, Amidiaver. Nylos was an art director for Star Trek V, and it is. And Nylos was you know, Greg Jean's ILM connection. Okay. He was a designer on tons of Star Trek stuff since uh, Star Wars stuff. Sorry, since two since nineteen seventy. I committed a sin. I need to go confess. Since nineteen seventy eight. Mm. So now that was probably the one that went. Damn, that's where that time. That's where that uh, X wing went to. I and wish I found me an X wing in here, if possible. Star uh, Trek five. Like, I would like a photograph of Nylos's resume, if possible. I'm curious. Okay. I got at one of the gentlemen that just volunteered some. Pretty critical information about that. I asked for it, and I think I'd just like to go ahead and get a copy of that and send it on to him. It's not a problem. Let me, my friend, let me back up in my tracks real quick and put it aside before it gets lost in paper land. All right. So, folks, we are obviously interested in anything and everything that you say. If something comes up that's not germane to what we're talking to about, or you think, in all honesty, we have no clue or idea, please forgive me if I don't acknowledge that particular one as I watched for the next comment. It is not about choosing it's just i want to make sure that we can actually and so far not a single thing has come across the chat that we haven't been able to address right. but i didn't want somebody to feel upset if somebody posted something and i made a very quick decision okay not right now we'll come back to it in the future i didn't want them to feel i was doing that for any reason other than time management and more enterprise designs now media verse if you would please send me an email at jim at world.com and i will follow up with you joey's visor obviously yeah, it's got a note in the front here it says uh, yeah his visual sensor i really like it because that that looks like that might be an earlier design but i'm not sure it'd be 32387 if that helps you Yep, that was definitely, yep. Richard says, I'm too amazed to type, except for art of Star Wars books, lots of Nalos and Joe Johnston designs in those books. There we have something. It's like model bid for Star Trek for the next generation. Estimate, this looks like for the six, is that six foot? Yep, that was the Enterprise biggie. Enterprise model, $3,650. Wow, that was cheap. Yeah. No wonder they didn't like it. They had to build a four foot. I'll take two. Yeah. <laughs> They're small. Yeah, this stack just keeps. This is on the phone. While everybody else is listening to us right now, I also want to. Hi, Larry. Nice to meet you. That Mediaverse was writing me back on that one. We have a variety of people listening in that I think follow the channel fairly regularly, but it might be unusual to have these people in at the same time. So I am going to throw out something as a sidebar, and I, I don't want to do any more discussion by it, but if any of you knew Joe Jennings or Daniel Jennings' son, would you please email me and contact me? It's pretty critical. Thank you. Meanwhile, back on the ranch, set that tricorder again. What does that page look like? Oh, well, let's uh, go back to the beginning. Prop designs for construction bids. Yeah. Those are the tricorders. Contact Richard says, yes, this, uh, the tricorder scene in a company of drawings is basically the same type of unit seen in the Star Trek features. The new unit has been scaled down in size, though we hope not in ca capabilities. You can kind of see that. Get you a good little start. Power on indicator. So. And I guess it was the, the factory company that just did a limited run of like a thousand of those or something like that. Like. Twelve hundred dollars a piece or something. I'm not sure how much they were. But productions. Yeah. It's all dated three twenty three of nineteen eighty seven. Here's the hero tricorder close oh, nice. sensors. It's amazing how much work went into all this just to design one <laughs> item. Yeah. It makes me wish it's a shame that a lot of the earlier design artwork and stuff like that didn't survive from the original series. Because the approach to getting these props out and stuff has been pretty much the same. And you can see the vast amount of paperwork that we do have from next gen and onward that we did because when star trek ended a lot of it was just destroyed because everybody including gene was convinced it was just a, it was dead in the water yeah, it was one and done is what he thought yeah. yeah we lost so much back then you all would have loved to have emptied the dumpster at paramount that week oh yes that's why some of this stuff spills into some of these storage units. You find these random things, you know, because someone as simple as a garbage man might have been smart enough to uh, say, hey, yeah. these things are cool. This is what made movies. I'm going to keep it. Yep, snag yeah. on. Snag it, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because people that live out there, 
you know, a lot of the people that refer to as my Gen Zero people, they're the ones that are just like Gen One. They were there from the beginning, but they were actually in Los Angeles. And it is absolutely remarkable to me on how open everything was and people just ended up with things for nothing because they just picked them up yeah this is a message to greg from a dc fontana oh yeah i see that dc fontana regards dorothy okay yep she, was, she used the name dc because she started script editing and stuff like back in the 60s and it was frowned upon never officially but unofficially you'd never sell anything for a woman to be doing that so she used the initials and everybody thought she was a male when they took her when they first started buying her stuff and by the time everybody figured it out her work stood for itself so it's a pretty smart idea yes one of our viewers is like a brother-in-law or a sister-in-law of hers oh wow try to put this back in order so it doesn't get shuffled you give me a bear with me for i'm not 38 even, seconds let me i'm not even mel brooks comment try to keep the script just never really got into space balls but i love mel, I, I, I love mel brooks oh i do too yeah i do too you know when I, when the stuff is listed yeah, some of it may be underpriced, and I guess some may be overpriced. You know, because it's you know some of the yeah. stuff is a subjective of what it's worth. So some exactly. of the prices might be made up. So if you feel something is wrong with the pricing, and you want to buy something, just an email. You know, with a reason and something you know that you think is realistic, and I'm sure we'll work with you. Cool. It's going to be a, a long road though, because I think there's a, there's yeah, a lot there of is. stuff. Yeah, there is so much. You know, I talked to my guy that does my internet account and he said that he's already taken about a thousand photos of items and he hasn't even scratched the pile. That's what apparently what he told me the other day. Wow. You're going to need to sell some of this stuff just to pay the bill. Truth to that. That's, that's, that's almost like sweatshop labor. Well, as you know, Southern California is not a, an expensive place to live. Right. Wow. But we do find things here that you can't find in other places. Definitely. Let's see here. Let's pick a new box. Optical lasers. This could be. You want to try to find your box with those unseen things. There you oh, go. Yeah. This is your photo stack. Let's see. I can find some. It's in these pretty simple binders. Model locker copy. This is some for a toy or something. Yeah, Mars attack. I think actually one of something in in the scrap boxes of the plastic piece is also identified as being from Mars. I can't remember. Yeah, here's some more Mars attacks storyboards. We'll just skip that. We'll try to get to. Stuff Stuff that you guys enjoy cool. yeah they, everything that's in here I mean, it's amazing it. you know you think that something's done and it just keeps coming out more storyboards 89 wow man there's so much stuff in some of these folders it just goes for forever wow let's see what we got here greg we can't tell if this is for star trek yet but something it does not look like star trek to me i'm trying to find your binder you know so you can see the uh, yeah, scene. Oh, here you go. I see. But you showed me already. I'm like a sugar. I'm sure you would have loved to have been at the swap meet that day with me digging. I mean, it was just a frenzy. You know, this guy just showed up and started throwing all this stuff on the ground. Oh, my. When I saw, the first thing I saw was a TIE fighter. And I looked at the quality of it. And I said, wow, this doesn't look like a regular person's <laughs> stuff. So I proceeded to look for something with a name on it and i picked up a poster tube that said greg gene so at that point i just stopped looking in the boxes and just started piling them up and i worried about it when i what was inside when i got home just wow, like that, pure gambled that, style and it was expensive that, that was nemesis star trek 9 is nemesis of everywhere yeah this is uh, this is the movie that killed the first call sheet yeah we're in the late 90s now so 98 oh, yeah. more call sheets 91 if you see something interesting you want me to slow down and so far you're good okay just holler it's all interesting but again I, i'll let you know like like with the resume thing i'll let you know if there's something that really catches my eye how about like, some uh, per, how about all the original purchase orders that's pretty cool huh yeah that is amazing this is for the construction of two cleon ships 1300 bucks man it's almost the same price in 1982 as it was in 1993 an enterprise built for that movie so this one he wanted 5500 it was for the alien shuttle miniature okay for next generation fourth order yeah. let me pull this folder out let's see what we got this looks like a sail invoice this is uh, for the prince and it still has the original prince attached to it oh nice mm -hmm, yeah. oh here's some more of that how they were making that his master prop book yeah this would be the uh, probably with no photos gotcha. is that fascinating i was so happy to see that because that I'd heard of them. I just never actually even seen nobody ever taken a picture of them or anything. Yeah, and it was funny because I saw that and somebody else had all that paperwork in a pile, but yeah. the guy didn't really know what he was buying. And after he paid the seller, I, I gambled a, a large amount of money just based on seeing that prop master prop book on top. I was like, this looks like something I like to gamble on. Yeah, because those kind of things, as you are aware, they get gobbled up real fast by the 
private collector. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, normal everyday people don't have a prayer. But more importantly, when you find something like that, like this gamble, definitely a good investment. Because Dan and Peter, something about the small hero shuttles. Oh. There's a fax. It was sent is signed by Jenny. Gregory Jean Incorporated. Oh, yeah. Very cool. I love it. People go back and watch some of my older videos, not realizing they're older videos. They stream it because back then I was still calling him Greg Jane instead of Greg Jean. Oh, yeah. yeah I don't that's what Best of us. Well, I have a friend that still calls the Starship Enterprise an airplane, so I know how you feel. Wow, holy cow. The Paramount family. There's a good Paramount letter. Planet Hollywood. We got some evidence of property insurance for Planet Hollywood. It's probably something they displayed. Yep. There's something interesting. This looks like they... And I want to find you that binder. A lot of strange things have ended up in Planet Hollywood over the years. They actually... A phase two Enterprise hanging from the ceiling. We, I don't think they were prove it was the completed original model but it was definitely made from by the same people from the same model right? weird shows up in those stores i got something from lawnmower man we go. oh, let's just look at general plans let's see what we got here yeah some headshots all right i'm gonna move on from this box and see if i can find you this is not the correct box i know all those preliminary designs i know i put it all in one spot it's just a matter of which box I put all this away as i go along and also i know as my guy is taking photos here too he kind of moves some stuff around so some of it yeah it's some stuff up. that was here before might not be here now yeah it may be impossible to to not do that i don't want to mix them up yeah, also, yeah, yeah, exactly, same thing. And I mean, all else fails, too. I mean, I most certainly will end up watching the auctions to call the pictures from them. So, I mean, there's, there's more than one way to skin this cat. Yeah. So don't don't tie yourself up. I don't want I don't want to. That's some more displays, so it's a VHS display. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that was definitely, that was a Star Trek five because he was first and foremost in all the publicity stuff for that. Yeah. That was the press conference where he forgot Walter's name. Oh, was that this is a different guy's stuff. Oh, man. Wow. Let's see what else we got this box still. This one's got some of these. Uh, you showed these blueprints already, I believe. These are the Kuda ones. Oh, this one I'm just afraid to unroll right here. Let me see. Oh, there's the... Uh, oh, look at that. Uh, you can see the... Uh, you need a hell of a fly swatter. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he is right. It's uh, latex over foam. Oh, yep. Wow. That is crazy. That's nice. That's, that's very cool. Final Frontier shooting schedule. Now, for those of you who are listening along at this particular point in time, because we have a little over 20 people that are listening on right now but this is probably one of the most unique live stream videos that has been on youtube probably ever at this point so yep. it would probably you would probably win a tremendous amount of nerd cred if you made sure that you told your friends to go back and check after you're done it's going to clock in two hours or more so it's going to be a, a big seating because we're one hour 34 right now but it's something i think that it, for those people that were not able to to sit on it live they really should sit in on for no other reason than the fact that we know this stuff is good at that particular account yes so if if they'd like to be able to try to get in front of and watch for something, come back and roll through this again. Exactly. Yeah. I hate live streams. I never go back and watch them again. I think it's difficult my attention, but so it's gonna gar garner a lot of views over time. It's gonna be all the blueprints. Some of these poor pages just got I think this stuff was just saved more by somebody being a hoarder than somebody archiving. Yeah. yeah. Although I have to admit, so far, I am pleasantly surprised to see no evidence of water damage on any of At least not in the ones you can prove. I mean, I know the guy that had purchased the storage did show me the photo of the storage. And it wasn't uh, it wasn't an indoor facility in L.A. So it wasn't like outside, you know. So And the stuff was generally probably in a, a good, cool, dry place. The location where he got it, though, you know, I know that location from my previous auction, you know, from auction buying. And it's definitely good that it's not covered in a rat pee. Thank God that whoever stored this stuff didn't put uh, bottles of water and food with it. I'm not sure where else so my guy put the other boxes. Yeah. Uh, model. I have model parts land over here. Driveway there, do be cognizant of not necessarily showing what's outside your driveway. Yeah. I, I want to protect you just as much as I want to protect the Hollywood people on that uh, distro list that we had up. Oh, yeah. They have all this other stuff down here. Model, it's all model pieces, I think. Okay. You know, Silent Run, Star Trek. It's going to be too hard to dig in that pile. But I think, uh, Jim, maybe you can uh, just continue with the uh, yeah, other me, photos I sent you. Yeah, let me go over the last bit. Like I said, we're, we're not going not gonna to be keeping people too long with it because we actually we were at the point where hopefully we're going to be moving a little bit, bit faster on it for them. But, yes, I'm, let's go ahead and get started on that. Yeah, uh, I'd hate to uh, jumble this up anymore so my my ebay guys are gonna call me and ask me what i did 
I don't the experience to have a negative side. Well, it looks like we already started. See, he's got the batteries not included a uh, guest pass here. Here's your master prop book. Oh, hold on. Yeah. Oh, man. How much does that weigh? What's that? About how much does that weigh, book weigh? I'm curious. Probably a couple pounds. Okay. It's got some weight to it. I could tell you that. That's exactly what I was thinking. That's why I was just curious. Let's go back to you. No worries. But all right, my brother. Well, I will uh, watch the rest of your stream and I will uh, cut out from you. Okay. Let you guys finish the discussion on it. Thank you for joining us. Much appreciated. Oh, yeah. Just a fun little live preview. Yeah. You know, what What I sent you photo, photos of probably covers pretty well just due to the sheer fact that I was going through it slowly while I was sending you those pictures. It does too. I yeah. mean, I'm going through this stuff. Yeah, definitely. So, all right. So for those of you watching along, I brought back up the, uh, the photograph listing again. Just There is a section in one of these boxes that is... PAS, obviously. So he collected some things from that as well. The Ambergus element, Aquan stab, webbed hands, flipper feet, and small dorsal fin between shoulder blades, shape up, shape without points. So for some of you out there, what just happened? Hold on one moment for a second. Kind of weird. Okay, so Roger, you may have to be my eyes and ears. I can see everything we've got with the chat, but for whatever, or, or I see everything that we're, everybody's talking about, but oh, came back. Never mind. The uh, comments disappeared right off my screen. Yeah. Right? So, um, yeah. Okay, they, they came back magically. So I, I do not believe that he was involved in the animated series. So I think this is just another instance of him keeping things. Right. So we got what? Technical service guide, Star Trek 6, day in, day out. It says the sign-in sheet, it looks like. Yep. Yeah, number one at the top. William Shatner, Kirk. Yeah, like just in case anybody didn't know who he was. Yeah. Boy, doesn't that look like it? It did, yes. It, it does, yes. I think Manley would absolutely love to read that, wouldn't he? I haven't seen him on here, so I don't think he made it tonight. I don't think he's on tonight. So Man, this there. is Ro Donald Matheson. Is he Matheson's son? That's what I wonder. Let me let me see if I can look that up real quick while we're looking. Okay. You know, because his dad was in is in Desilu and Network DNA from that time frame. Yeah. So. Oh yes, absolutely. Hey, Hero monitors, breakdown, notes, drawings, another paycheck. There's the magnetic boots from Star Trek VI, I think. It's interesting that the name of the fax machine that's printed on was Talent, yeah. which implies to me that it played, you know, that it probably came through close to the normal production stage where the actors would be and stuff. Right. As wrestlers referred, the, the wrestling corporations refer to their wrestlers as talent because they really are just entertainers, some more physical than others. Sure. So this was neat. This was pretty neat because I'd never seen one of these before. This is a licensed property approval form that was issued to ERTL in Dyersville. So for those of you who may not catch that, ERTL is, was Tomy. It's Tomy, okay? And at one point, they were actually part of, ERTL was actually part of AMT, but long, ugly story. But this is goes back to 1988, and this was for them putting together a three-piece anniversary set I'm sorry, a three-piece adversary set. He is not one of Richard Matheson's children. Okay, must be yep. just a coincidence. Yep. What else we got here? Yep. Tin Man ship. To Greg for the chips and photos. Oh, from Gary. This is when he reached out for Gary and asked him for a copy of the uh, the drawings that he had done. Paramount Pictures purchase order. DeLorean ship. Rigid frame. Full-size Enterprise. Armature. I like the little Godzilla picture down in the corner. That's paint. Guns. Prop guns. Oh, paint swatch is nice. Yeah. Save. Shuttle 2 pattern. Okay, here we go. Thanks. Flipped in your barrels to Greg Jean. From Dan Curry. Okay, cool. Star Trek 2, though. This is 92. Yeah. Mike Yakuta did these. Later, yeah. Okay. Oh, what is that? Tellarian Space Draft. Okay, cool. That was when we saw drawings for. Yep. Greg Jean purchase order boxes. And more boxes. Yes. That's the Katinga model. Yep. And my guess is these are photos that Greg took or the team. That's what it looks like, yeah. Saucer. Here is a recommended way to make a Death Star. What I want to know is who's actually taped under that piece of tape down there at the bottom. Always yeah. see the head peeking out. More pieces. Participating writers. There's Steve Golly again that we talked about. Yep. And I think that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We've gone through the ones that, that I had originally scheduled for us to go through. So with that in mind, we're probably going to go ahead and get ready to wrap up the uh, the live stream. There's a lot here for you guys to be able to go back and, and review and comment on and leave Easter eggs. Tell your friends and family. Again, the channel name to watch or the eBay seller's name will be Dusty Shed. Some stuff stuff out there already and some stuff will be listed. As you heard, the, the poor guy that's doing the auctions for him has already taken a thousand photos. So this is going to be a while. Yes. Len, 
while you were still online, 7.46 p.m. Are you still there? And can you hear me? Please answer in the chat. Mentioned. He just said fascinating. Right. I just want to make sure he's still there. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Because every time I try to reach out to him and talk to him on the chat, he's already gone because I don't pay attention to the time delay on the chats. Yes, he is still there. Okay, cool. Len, we're going. To, I'm going to get ready to schedule the next watch party. It's going to be Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, this weekend at about 3 o'clock. And I would like you to be one of our guest hosts with me and Roger, if you're available. The link that I can send you, which is very similar to the link that the other gentleman just used a moment ago, does not require any software on your computer. It can actually run in a browser. And the whole purpose really is I want to start moving some of the people that we know and see repeatedly, you. you. We had yeah. Manly on last time to get to know me and Roger, and we get to know you. And, of course, the, the folks get to know you as well. So if you're yeah. interested in that, just send me an email at jim at trek-world.com. And I'll send you an email with, a, with telling you how we'll do the links and everything. And if for whatever reason you decide to pass, I am perfectly okay with that. But I just wanted to make sure that I gave you that opportunity. And because of YouTube not allowing any person-to-person -person communications, the only an iPad would work just fine with that, that that way. Because YouTube does not allow anybody to DM me or me to DM somebody else, I can only grab people when I have them in a live broadcast or I already know their email address. And Len, I use an iPad as well, so it, and it works out perfectly. So you, you're yeah, I think I think he's using. As a matter of fact, he's using an iPad right now. Yep, so it works pretty pretty good on that. Anyhow, for the rest of you folks, I want to thank you for the time you spent with us tonight. Obviously, we've all had a ball, and we might some of us, especially those of you who work out in that area. I can tell definitely by the comments might have just a, a tiny bit getting a tiny bit of a problem getting your mind to slow down for sleep tonight. So it'll be interesting to see what information we get back from folks. So until then, I want to thank everybody for the time once again that you've spent with us. It's always a pleasure, Roger, and I love doing these things for you guys. Please be on the watch. We will be doing, like I said, I will be scheduling the watch party for Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. Central Time. And we'll see you there. Yes. Nice. So now let's Bye -bye. get up with the fun stuff like this right over here.